Welcome back to Calm Street College. We are now going to um, produce a hand tool exercise. Some of the things that we will be doing today will be a variety of things. So for example, uh, looking at this, this is gonna be a slotted hole where we could probably use this for a lock. Um, we have what we call a blind hole. This is sometimes used, a lot of times it's used when we're putting on a hinge like this. This is known as a blum hinge. So that could be there. The keyhole side of the things, which is here, that's again where we're likely to have a keyhole is when we're fitting in a lock like this. Uh, these elements here, this is a housing, a type of housing, but it's, it's been uh, uh, marked out on a, a 60 degree angle. Uh, so that's another exercise using a, a, a specialist tool called a hand router. That's what we will do with that one. This is a straightforward housing, a trench housing that, again, is just using a variety of hand tools to produce a variety of options. Rebate, this is a rebate. I'm gonna be using a rebate plane to produce that. Now, again, rebates are used on doors in carpentry and joinery. So we have, I'll show you this one. We have a rebate here and rebate there on this door. Also, you can get them, obviously, rebates on windows, like this one. So this one's a rebate here. This is receive a gla glazing on that. Um, now, this element here is a groove. Now, within carpentry and joinery, we have grooves that, that are going to receive panels. So, again, if I can show this analogy on this door, for example, this is a panel, but for that panel to be in this door, it needs to be inserted into a groove. And that we have a cut here, which is what we call a compound angle. So compound angles are angles that you've got one uh, angle going one way and the other angle going the opposite way. Now that uh, a detail sometimes happens a lot with roofing. So when we've got jack rafters, we need to cut compound angles. So this is what we're doing at, the, at the very end of this task. The, the material that you'll need for today will be a, a piece of timber 500 by 95 by 45 PAR, which stands for a plain all round timber. One, good. Tools needed for this job are a pencil, a ruler, a combination square, a set square, a single pin marking jage, a 32 mil bevel edge chisel, a 19 mil bevel edge chisel, a 10 mil bevel edge chisel, a 13 mil bevel edge chisel, a sliding bevel, a side rebate plane, two hand routers, one with a six mil cutter, and the other one with a 12 mil cutter, a plough plane, a rebate plane, a slotted screwdriver, a bradle, a pincer, a mallet, a smoothing plane, a hand saw, cross cut, a tenon saw. So we also need a cordless drill, a auger bit, a 10 mil auger bit, a six mil auger bit, and a forstner bit also. The aids I used were a masking tape, a bench hook, a sash cramp, a sash cramp uh, block, a F clamp. From the, the brief here, uh, which is a scale of one to two, I have then marked out the actual uh, object in a one to one scale, which means full size. So, so now I'm going to start marking out the positions of everything relating to this hand tool exercise. So doing that like a running total as I'm going along. Harold, right, so I've got 20 and then 20 to there. And then we've got 105, got 105, that's it, 130, 180, 180, uh, 240, 240, 
300 to there. 300, 360, 372. And then our overall finish, because we've got to allow for this saw cut, is going to be 495. I've marked out the positions where everything's going to go. So uh, a little reference mark there, keyhole mark reference there, one there. Um, a blind hole there, the s beginnings of the slotted holes here and here, a straightforward housing uh, line, the second straightforward housing line. Now this side, I mark my 20 mm in and then I'm going to start setting out where my cross kind of uh, my cross housing is going to be, which is set at the 60 degree angle so now i'm going to mark out this the line for my rebate just a pencil line not this is not a permanent line just a i'm lying where my rebate is going to go my actual rebate in this case is 25 mil deep and it's going to be 10 mil uh depth so 25 mil wide and 10 mil deep so i'm going to do that using my combination square so i'm just going to set that Okay, so now I've, I've set my uh, combination square to, to uh, 25 mil line and now I'm going to run this 25 mil along this edge. This is where my rebate is going to be, 25 mil in. So this is important because this is a guide. Okay, that's going to be there. That's it, 25 mil. Next thing, is setting up my my 60 degree angle for this housing. So I'm going to pick up my set square, which is one of these. There's that. And just move it to this set square. Right, so. So this is a bevel. This is my set square. It's going to be easier so let me see let's try that again there we are so now i'm going to mark out my positions so we're going to go like that and this one comes from there like that stays there and then i'm going to take a measurement so the width of this housing is 14 mil wide, 14, one, four. So we've got there, 14, and then we're gonna have 14. So right angle to the actual angle that you've marked is always the way to measure this. So that right angles, so not this way, but right angles to the line that I've already marked. So let's continue that. So we've got one there. So this one is going to go there. And that one is going to go through there. Like that. So there we have it. There. To there. So this comes. Now, okay, so my next move now is to mark this a center line or a center for the holes that I will be drilling, the keyhole, blind hole, slotted hole. But I'm taking that from here, where that cross is, and then I'm gonna just literally put a line there, one there, that's, that's another point. This is going to be another, those two. Okay, and that's it. So I'm just going to write some measurements here. So this is 25. 
This is 19. This is going to be 19. This is going to be the center marks for when I start training my heart. This is going to be uh, um, the eight. And this is going to be a six. So what I'm talking about is the diameter of the hole. So this is a six mil, eight, 25, 19, 19 mil hole. I'm going to drill series of 19 mil holes and then just chisel it away. This is going to be a housing and this is a housing, but at an angle of 60 degrees. And then of course we've got a rebate going across here, which is 25 by 10. So, so now I'm going to um, mark the depths of the housings for the, uh, for the cross housing at a 60 degree, this one, and this straight forward. So just marking the depths for those housings there. That's the next stage. Right, here we go. So now I'm going to set this up to 10, this marking gauge. So now I'm going to just highlight my gauge lines and then just turn it over to the opposite side. Okay, um, I just had to extend these lines a bit longer here, especially because, um, where they are marked in now, because I need to cut those housings just the full depth, not partially. So I need to extend those across. And then I was going to mark these lines down on the side now. That's what I'm going to do right, next. So now I'm just going to square over the lines that I extended from earlier. So just going to squeeze and then get my marking gauge. Okay, so I need to um, put a groove here in the middle of this material. The actual, the actual groove uh, needs to be uh, approximately 15 mil wide. Now this piece of timber is 45 mil in its width. Now, a little trick that you can do um, just by placing the ruler, my ruler at an angle, and the angle is this. So I just find a number divisible by three. In this case, I can move this ruler so it's um, pointing to 60. 60 from there to there. Now, a number, so divisible by three, so I, I know I can divide threes into 60, go 20. So if I mark 20, 40, and then obviously at the every end will be uh, 60. If I parallel those lines down, this is gonna be exactly equal, like so. Now, and in theory, it's just that little bit under 15, but that's okay. Because what we're gonna also need to do is just widen the hole a little bit with a specialist plane. So I'm going to go with that now. So I'm going to parallel those lines down. So we net down now, just to mark those down, just uh, all the way down using my com combination square, as you can see. And then move that one to there. There we are. So oh, I need to mark the 60 degree angle here, as well as obviously going 45 here. So in fact, the whole thing is called a compound cut. So one part of it is 60 and the other part is 45. Now, 
To do that, I need to bring back my sliding bevel and this reach, this check my six degrees is still set to where it's supposed to be, which is there, which is still set. That's good. I've got my combination square ready. So away I do with the marking. So I place that on that line, which is the 495 line I marked earlier. So this mark that across there like that. And then pick up my combination square, which is as the 45 degree angle on it. So I just mark that from the 60 degree line that I have there. And then do the same thing here. And then last of all, at the very back is six degree with my line. So that should run through like so. And there we have it. Interesting, good. So now I'm going to cut just a saw cut of this line that line, that one, this one, these cuts there, that cut there, just a saw cut. And also uh, do a little cut for here, for the compound angle going across here, as well as there. Um, and that's about it. So those are the ones I'm going to be doing in front of you now. So that one, that one, and these compound cuts as well, just a little bit. So now, okay. I'm going to use the trench method I've used before in my other videos, where I knife across where my saw is going to rest into and do that chiseling method along here, ready for my saw to cut into on all these bits here, and that, that one, that one, the compound angle as well. Right, okay, so the flat edge of the chisel needs to be sitting in the waist side. So don't chisel, don't mark it this way around, mark it that way. So you've got the flat edge of the cut on the waist side, which is inside the middle there, like that. So if I put that on there, I'll just show you what I mean. So I'm going across there like that. I'm just knifing across, and I'm going to just lightly chisel through.
I've, what I've done so far, I've done the trenching for the fronts here, ready for my saw cuts. I still need to do that along this edge, as well as this edge now. Just continue this trench method through, yeah, ready for my sawing activities. Now, I've finished uh, trenching every cut where I'm going to place a saw cut um, in readiness. So this is what I'm going to do now, is just cut these parts where I've allowed for the trenching to happen as a guide. It's always a guide, yeah, it's only a guide. That's why I do it. It's a guide for the saw so it doesn't obviously jump out and cut where it doesn't need to. Um, so this is a helpful trade for those of you out there. 